Here in the United States, heat advisories and warnings are in place for more than 170 million people across the United States. And in Southern California, heat-related emergencies are on the rise, as are the threat of wildfires. That is Tiansan reports from Los Angeles. Southern California, baking in the summertime heat that's gripped so much of the country, indeed the world. In many areas, enjoying recreational activities outdoors has become a challenge. Sometimes we do usually put water on our heads and... Desperate to stay cool, many are getting creative. But health officials say heat-related illnesses and emergencies have been on the rise. If they are stranded, they need to get help. And so they need to call their friends or family, somebody that can help them remove themselves from that environment because remaining in that environment will lead to death. And in fact, 2023 is on track to become the deadliest year for heat-related fatalities in U.S. national parks. Five so far this year, according to preliminary data from the National Park Service. Following a number of incidents coinciding with above normal temperatures, fire departments are also keeping an eye on hikers during the midday hours. You should really prepare yourself a couple days in advance for that because de dehydration uh, starts very quickly. Hundreds of firefighters, meanwhile, have been deployed to battle flames raging from brush fires across Southern California. In Los Angeles County alone, multiple fires have broken out over the past few days. One firefighter was injured while battling the fast-moving Agua fire, which remains only 20 percent contained. Above average temperatures will persist for the rest of the week, along with heightened risk for medical and fire emergencies. It is Tianshan, CGTN, Los Angeles. And this scorching summer has the attention of people all across the globe. For more on the extreme weather, we're going to bring in Anjan Bose. He is the Regents Professor at the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at Washington State University. Anjan, thanks very much. Uh, we certainly appreciate your time and very important story. I want to kind of break this down. Firstly, let's kind of look at the big picture from a global standpoint because we're seeing all kinds of things going on, the fires in Greece, uh, allegations that perhaps the jet stream is altered somewhat, blowing dust in some areas into regions that's never experienced this, Greenland expansion, record melting, and what's going on in the U.S. What is driving all of this? Um, of course, it's uh, climate change is uh, driving all of this, but it's in the short term, it is very difficult to predict what the local weather is going to be. And that's been the, uh, the real issue about uh, forecasting the electric grid and, the, uh, and how much stress the electric grid is going to face because of uh, air conditioning and the increased demand in uh, electrical load. So that's, uh, uh, that's the big problem facing the power companies. Indeed, and we heard in that story from Los Angeles uh, the emergency room saying, look, if you're outside and you begin feeling something, you need to go as soon as you start experiencing any kind of heat exhaustion. What impact is this having on people's lives? And you think of cities like Phoenix in the U.S. Southwest, parts of New Mexico, obviously California, where you have a lot of elderly uh, individuals. This seems like the potential for a, a huge catastrophe if this continues unabated. Uh, well, uh, several things here. Um, the, um, the temperatures that you're seeing are not unheard of in these places in the southern region, like, uh, like you said, Southern California, Arizona. It's the fact that it's been, cons it's been going on for days and days uh, after each, uh, all uh, along, and that's making the uh, situation much worse. And uh, the need for being indoors uh, or cutting back on work uh, that is going on outside, that's, uh, that's becoming more and more important and is being enforced, I think, by various government, uh, local government entities. The, the other thing is the uh, providing cool, cool, cooling space to uh, these people. And that's been a, a big strain on the power companies, which wasn't expecting to have to have these long stretches of uh, high load demand. Yeah, and if you heard, 170 million people in the U.S. under some kind of heat advisory this week, and that's half, the, half of the country. The largest electric grid operator issued an alert due to the heat. Now, what's going to happen 
if these warnings aren't met and these grids just get completely overloaded? Well, the uh, the grids are as about uh, as uh, as overloaded as they can be right now. But of course, we we design the grids to be able to handle the worst conditions. And not only that, we have to also design the grid so that even during the worst conditions, if they have some uh, some failures, for example, if if some generator uh, sure. uh, has to be st stopped, then uh, then we have to be able to still bear it. But the big problem right now is that once the uh, system, the power grid, is stretched, stressed for days on end, the probability of more uh, things going out, things damaged, are uh, increases. And so you become more and more concerned as the days go by as to whether you can, uh, you can handle the, the demand. And the final thing, of course, uh, on all this is they're asking people to, to conserve, to cut back on not doing things that is not related to air conditioning and, and other needs. So, uh, so if they don't follow that, then, of course, the, the only thing that the power companies can do is to do some rotating uh, load shedding which is going to be very unpleasant. You know, last, last summer it was the concern of water crisis. The reservoirs had fallen to record lows. This year, uh, the grids. What procedure do the electric companies have in place to stay in power? Because what, you, what you're talking about, if, if businesses and other entities don't cut back on the amount of, of, of electricity that's going toward air conditioning, I mean, you know, you can only handle so much. That, yes. Uh, so, um, uh, the, I, what we would like not to happen is to get to the point where we are sending out these uh, uh, pleas for cutting back on your uh, on usage. But if it comes to that, then finally, like I said, the power company will have to resort to what we call load shedding, mm -hmm. uh, and then cut off uh, loads to places which are not that critical. That is a frightening outcome, potentially. Yeah. We, but we have so far uh, managed this heat because nothing, uh, no crisis has happened except very, very locally. And so I think uh, uh, we, we, we expect to get through it mm -hmm. without mishap. But I think some belt tightening will absolutely be necessary. You're looking at the same weather maps I am, and there is no break in sight for some time. So I'm sure we'll check back with you on this. Uh, let's okay. hope indeed that these electric companies can get by and all those people who are in need of air conditioning can get it. Anjan, thank you so much.